Hey New Life, welcome to New Life Circles. We're so happy that you're here. Last week we had a little bit of an electricity problem. As you know, there is no electricity in this building, but we missed you and we're happy to be back this week. So tonight we're in Psalm 130, if you wanna turn there with me. And while you're doing that, I want you to picture this fork in the road moment. I know in movies and TV we've seen these characters go to this spot where there's two paths that they have to choose from. And this is called a fork in the road moment. Oftentimes, the scary path or the frightening path is usually the shorter path or the shortcut. And then there's another path that looks kind of more beautiful. And usually the character chooses the scary path because they want to get to where they're going faster. And there's a lot of problems that they encounter in that journey. But they have a choice. As the character of that story, they choose what way they go without even knowing where they're going or, or how it's going to end up. And tonight, I want to make a case to you that oftentimes as believers, we think, we think that we have a choice in this fork in the road moment with suffering and contentment. So we think that we can choose not to suffer or to be more content. We want to choose that side that's more content and happy and good. But to be honest with you tonight, I actually think that as a human, we tend to not always have that choice. We tend to not always have that choice not to suffer. We don't have a fork in the road moment oftentimes when we suffer, when we go through hard situations and circumstances. Suffering is a part of our humanity. We are born into a broken world and into a fallen world. Suffering comes with that. There's times where we go through hardships mentally, physically, and emotionally. And we don't get a choice sometimes. Those circumstances happen and we suffer. Now, we do have a choice though to have hope during those times. And that's what I want to talk about a little bit tonight. In Psalm 130, we see the writer crying out to God in their time of suffering and need. They're at their bottom, at their lowest moment, saying, I'm suffering. I'm suffering. This is the emotion that I'm feeling. There's nothing else to be said. I, it's just happening. I'm not choosing anything else. It's, it's happening to me. I am suffering. And I like that because it's so raw. And they're laying it out to God, saying, God cares about this. When God created us, I believe he created us to feel. He created us to feel deeply, and suffering is a part of that. So when we feel suffering, we get this glimpse of what Christ did for us on the cross. And that's really a beautiful thing, right? Even though suffering isn't necessarily beautiful. And I don't think that Christ wants us to suffer. I really don't believe that. But when we are suffering, we are reminded that we will not always be in the depths. We are reminded of the hope that we have in Christ. There is hope when we are even in our depths, when we are in our suffering. So suffering reminds us that there is hope. The end of Psalms 130 takes a turn and I love verse five and six. It says, I wait for the Lord, my soul waits, and in his word I hope. My soul waits for the Lord more than watchmen for the morning, more than watchmen for the morning. We may not always be able to escape suffering on this earth, but we have hope and we wait and watch for what is to come. There's no quick cures for suffering on this earth. Oftentimes the world tries to sell that to us. It tries to sell these quick cures, but there is none of those. But we need to remember that the only cure for our suffering is in Jesus. He is our hope. The name of God is used eight times in this psalm alone. And the psalmist recognizes who God is, that he's a God of hope, that he's a God of forgiveness, and he is steadfast in love and plentiful in redemption. The psalmist says these things right in this passage, right after he lays it all out there about his suffering, he recognizes the hope that he has in Christ. So in closing, we may not always have this, this choice, this fork in the road to suffer or not to suffer, but we do have a choice to hope in Christ through our suffering. And when we're on this journey on this earth, we have this hope in Christ. I have a quote I wanna close with today. It says this, I've come to see that it's through the deepest suffering that God has taught me the deepest lessons. And if we'll trust him for it, we can come through to the unshakable assurance that he is in charge. He 
He has a loving purpose and he can transform something terrible into something wonderful. Suffering is never for nothing. That quotes by Elizabeth Elliot, who's a missionary and author, and her husband was killed by an unreached tribe in Ecuador. She was left with her infant child, left to be a missionary on her own. She writes a lot about suffering and grief and loss, and her writings are beautiful because she's been in the depths. Suffering is never for nothing. I wanna end completely on Romans 5, 1 through 5. I think that's a good place to end tonight. It says, therefore, since we have been justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Through him, we have also obtained access by faith into this grace in which we stand. And we rejoice in hope of the glory of God. Not only that, but we rejoice in our sufferings, knowing that suffering produces endurance and endurance produces character and character produces hope. And hope does not put us to shame because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit who has been given to us. So tonight, as you get into your circles, I just pray for you that it will be a great night, that you'll have a lot of peace tonight in your circles, that you'll have great conversation and great time to reflect on suffering and on hope. So have a wonderful night.